It's Willa Kashkwala coming back at you with another quick lesson in the spirit, giving all glory, honor, and praises to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bashim Achapadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of the great millstone and rule and teach well. Peace of salutation to the 11144 first fruit. Uh, as you can see on my screen, I have something from NASA, the Earth Absor Observatory. Um, oh, so I can. All right, so this this dates all the way back in 06 of September to 09 of September. And this is going into the um, pretty much the, what you could say, the um, Euphrates River and it's drying up and it's steadily drying up to this very day. You could look up a plenty of document, uh, docu-series, um, plenty of videos and things of that nature pertaining to the um, Euphrates River, but it's showing, you know, prophecies are speaking. And what I'm showing you right here is, you know, yeah, um, freshwater storage strength in Tigris and Euphrates Basin. And this is an image from satellite viewing of what three years of pretty much drought and drying up the river has done. So it used to be uh, plentiful, as you can see. And this is the Euphrates River. And then it turned and dried up. But the main thing I want to spot out is the area where it dried up and made a symbol. You can see, and which is like the Omega symbol. All right. So I'm just going to go ahead and start with Revelation 1 and 8. It says, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, uh, the Almighty. So this is a uh, very spiritual you know what I'm saying? This is very spiritual. And we're going to get that word Omega here in the blue letter. Okay. Omega. And it's the last letter in the Greek alphabet. And it means the last. So this is one of the last prophecies that are come to come to pass. And I'm going to go ahead and grab it in Revelation 16. All right, Revelation 16 and 12, it says, And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great uh, river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. Now, we understand. No, let's just go ahead and... Um, one second. One moment. Okay. Just bear with me one second here, if you don't mind, I can. All right, that's what we're gonna do. All right, so I have this up. Let's see where it takes me. Here we go. So here's a good map. All right, let me zoom out just a tad bit. Oh, that's as far as it's going to zoom. All right. So what you see here is like the Middle East. So, of course, you got Egypt, Sudan, Saudi Arabia, Oman, Yemen, Iraq, Iran, Syria, Jordan, so on and so forth. All right. Turkey up there, things of that nature. But we're going to be focused on these this river right here, Euphrates. Okay. The Euphrates River. All right. As a matter of fact, let me see something. This location looks like it is actually in Syria. If we know what just happened, let's see. Just recently, there's a massive earthquake in Turkey and Syria area. Okay, what leaves thousands of people dead and this symbol this symbol is located in turkey so it says the researchers team observed the tigris and euphrates uh, river bison including parts of turkey syria iraq and iran so this symbol is located in the turkey and syria area 
Man, this is an omen. So we under this is the, this is a sign from the heavens just being plastered on earth, showing us that we are at the end. Like I said, uh, like you know, we read in the the word omega means the last. And this symbol was right there in Turkey, Syria area, which more than likely was about right here, is what we're looking at. Okay, because that's right dead in Syria. All right, could have been around this area or that area with where we're looking. Okay, so that symbol was in the Turkey, Syria. That's spiritual. So let's keep reading. Let's reread Revelation 16 and 12. It says, The sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. So let's go ahead and break this down, going back to this map. So let's zoom back out. So if you're looking at a map directly like we're doing here, west would be going this way where you see my mouse, and then east would be over here. So when it says Revelation 16, it says, And the water, and the water thereof was dried up. That's prophecy in itself right here, what we're seeing. We see the water has been dry, drying up in the Euphrates. And not only in this particular part area of the Euphrates, the entire river has been drying up lately. This was only back 2006, 2009. Okay. Okay. And it says that the ways of the kings of the east might be prepared. The ways of the kings of the east are talking about over in this area. So we understand and that's the, you see Russia in the picture. So we understand what Russia is trying to do. They're in a, they're in a fight uh, against the Ukrainians. OK. And the kings of the east. You got rush the BRICS nations. All right. Let's just pull that up. All right, the BRICS nations, totally spelled that wrong, but it, it involves Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. But these three right here are east, okay, of that location, Euphrates. All right, so let's go ahead and pull up some more scripts so we can better understand this. You already know where I'm about to go. Because we're about to, we're, that, that's that area where Revelation 16 is speaking about is where our Lord is going to come back and, you know, put in work. Okay. So we're going to hold 2nd Ezra 13th on, on deck. And then also we're going to hold Joel, uh, so like the third chapter on deck as well. OK. So it says in the water there was dried up that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. So we understand those BRICS nation, Russia, India, China, those are kings of the east. Other things, other nations you can include in that is uh, uh, like North, North Korea. All right. You can include those nations, too. All right. So this is, uh, I'm going to get Joel first. Joel 3 and 9, proclaim ye this among Gentiles. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Because for this whole time, America, America has been saying, oh, we're the strongest nation on the planet Earth. And no one has really stepped to the Americans. Now, it's saying beat your plowshares into uh, swords and your pruning hoods into spears. Those are agricultural equipment that are being formed into weapon um, uh, weaponry. Now, to give you a better understanding of what that is saying, you have to go into geopolitical thing, politics, and, uh, and economy, or how money is moved. So just simply, in a very simplistic term, how I'm going to say this, and give an example, when President Trump 
got into office, one of the first thing he did was take money from the agricultural side of things in America and dumped it. He will not only agricultural, but everything else, but a big lump sum of the agricultural uh, funding was dumped into military spending. Next thing you know, you end up having a space force. Okay, the space force, if I'm not mistaken, y'all can correct me if I'm wrong. That did not come about until Trump got in office. OK, it wasn't there during the time of Obama or maybe it was in the works of getting it done, but it became uh, like an actual function uh, part branch of the military when Trump was in office. OK, so that is an example of beating the plowshares and the swords and pruning hooks into spears. All right. So let's go jump back up to verse three. It says, proclaim ye. All right, proclaim ye this among the Gentiles, the heathens, prepare war. So we're preparing war. All right, they're preparing and they're waking up the mighty men. It says, let all the men of war draw near. You can take this all the way to um, Ezekiel 38 chapter where it talks, it talks about God and Magi. Okay. <clears throat> all right. So there it says, um, let them draw it says, let all the men of war draw near, let them come up. But what way are they going to come up? How are they going to draw near? That's when you have to understand Revelation 16 and 12. And so you're going to dry up the river of Euphrates, okay, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. So that's how they're going to draw near, crossing that, that threshold, crossing that area to get into, okay, to get into all of that. OK, so they're going to come. Russia's up there. Russia's all the way over here to China, things of that nature. Of course, they got planes and things of that nature, but they're tanks, they're soldiers, they're foot foot soldiers, because there will be boots on ground. They're going to cross the Tigris. They're going to cross the Euphrates to get into these areas. And how else are they going to do that? Can a tank swim, <laughs> float? No, it needs at least shallow water to get through or just ex extremely dry land to get through, okay? So the Euphrates River is deep. So now it's being dried up ever since the 2000s and it's continually to dry up. You know, that's where we get this sign from. So the kings of the East can fulfill the prophecy that's spoken about in Revelation 16 and Joel the third chapter. And then ultimately, let's keep reading, matter of fact, but ultimately, once these are fulfilled, that's when we're going to start reading 2 Ezra 13. So Joel 3 and 11, assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen, and gather yourselves together round about. Thither cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. Right. So they're going to cause the mighty ones to come down. But this is when you got to understand ge biblical geography and where this is going to take place. This is going to take place in the Valley of Jehoshaphat. So let's, con uh, <clears throat> let's continue reading. All right. Uh, verse 12, it says, let the heathen be wakened and come up to the Valley of Jehoshaphat. For there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. Uh, round about. So Jehoshaphat, all right, is Jehoshaphat in the Hebrew. Okay. Let's pull it up. All right. Joseph, Jehoshaphat is Jehoshaphat in the Hebrew, and it means pretty much the Lord has judged. All right. Or the Lord's judgment. Or you could say the valley of decision. All right. That's where this is going to take place. And what we're looking here on this map is the valley of decision. All that Middle East area. Because this Middle East area is what you would call. Modern day is called Middle East. Biblical terms, you will call this Eden, because this is where Eden would be placed when you read Genesis, the first chapter. OK, matter of fact, let me just pull that up real quick. Our right, Genesis, second chapter, Salaki. OK, because it talks about uh, pretty much the five bodies of water in that area. All right, let me just go straight to it. Bear with me. Let me catch my breath. <sighs> Excuse me. Genesis 2 and 
Salaki. So this is Genesis. And yes, I said five bodies of water. Genesis 2 and 10, it says, And a river went out of Eden to water the garden. All right? So we understand that's the first body of water. Okay? So in a river, that's the first body of water. It says, And from thence it was parted. So from that river it was parted and became into four heads. So that's proof right there that in Genesis, the second chapter, is five bodies of Salaki, a total of five bodies of water. Bear, one moment, Salaki, Aki. Salaki, uh, I'm back here. Okay, so that um, Genesis 2 and 10 lets you know that there was a total of five bodies of water. All right, so I'm going to keep reading. It says, and the name of the first is Pison. That is, I'm going to keep reading it all the way through, and we're going to go back to it. That is it which compasseth the whole land of Havilah, there, uh, where there is gold. All right. It says, in the gold, that land is good. So like in the gold of that land is good. There is bdellium and onyx stone. All right, verse 13. And the name of the second river is Gihon. Okay. The name of the second river is Gihon. And the same is it that can pass it the whole land of Ethiopia? All right, that can pass it the whole land of Ethiopia. So when you read this, yes, you can read it through, but understand that this is giving you uh, particular places that are on the map. So this is what you would call biblical geography, okay? All right. This is what you would call biblical geography. And these are certain rivers that you're going to have to know about. OK, so this is a again, it says in the second river is Gihon. The same is it that can pass it the whole land of Ethiopia. OK. In the fourth, Salakia, in the in the name of the third river is Hidikio. That is uh, it which goeth towards the east of Assyria, and the fourth river is Euphrates, all right? And the fourth river is Euphrates, all right? So now we're going to go back. Now we're going to go back and get the names of each of these rivers, okay? Because you got to understand Genesis before you understand Revelation. You got to know, and you got to understand Revelation to understand Genesis to an extent. All right, you got to understand the beginning and the end. So let's go back to verse 10. It says, And a river went out of Eden to water the garden, and there and from thence it was parting and became into four heads. And the name of the first is Pison. Okay, the name of the first is Pison. So the Pison would be the Red Sea today. Okay, so let's see if we got that map back up. All right, it would be the Red Sea today. So we got the Red Sea. All right, right here. All right. It says that is which that is it which can pass with the whole land of Havilah, there uh, where there is a where there is gold, and the gold verse twelve and the gold of that land is good. There's a lot of bdellium and the onyx stone. Verse 13, and the name of the second river is Gihon. Gihon today would be the Nile River. All right, would be the Nile River going back. All right, so you see the Nile over here, okay, where my mouse just was. If you see my mouse, that's right, that's the Nile, okay? So it's giving you locations. And of course, let me say this too. Of course, the land changed after the flood. All right. But this is what we got to work with for today. 
Okay? <laughs> it's probably that the land was much different than what we see it as today because of the flood happening. All right? Which separated. Because when you go into the flood, all right, the, it was, the rain came in three different ways. It, it, it opened up from the heavens. It came from the, the sky and from the earth. All right. So there's a lot of breaking up going on. All right. Water is a, par a powerful instrument. And if it's used in a destructive manner, it can destroy a lot to the point where it alters lands. All right. If you see where I'm getting at. So this is uh, Genesis chapter two again. Let's go to verse 13. It says, in the name of the second river is Gihon, which we covered is the Nile. The same is it that can pass it the whole land of Ethiopia. Okay, so it's giving you points. All right, it says, in the name of the third river is Hadikil. Uh, all right, that is it which goeth towards the east of Assyria. In the fourth river is Euphrates. So the Hadikil is the Tigris. In the, in the Euphrates is the Euphrates, and it gives you the location of where it would be, and this is where we see it here. Both of them together, there's no other reason why it would be in the same verse, both of them be in the same verse, because they're near each other, all right? So when we go into the Revelation, the 16th chapter, you understand where the Euphrates is and how the kings of the east, or where the kings of the east are going to cross to get into this area of the valley of a decision where the Lord will sit, like it says here in Joel, the 12, the 12th uh, verse, 3 and 12, it says, For I will sit to judge all the heathen round about. This is where it's gonna go down. And seeing a big sign like this, and then understanding that there is a big uh earthquake during this time, right where it was, that's heavy. Okay, this is a heavy prophecy that is coming to pass right before our eyes. All right, so this is second uh, Ezra chapter thirteen. I'm a, I'm a, uh, close it with this. It says, and it came to pass after seven days that during the dream by night. I'm gonna read pretty swiftly. It says, and lo, there arose a wind from the sea that moved all the waves thereof. And behold, and lo, that man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven, and when he turned his countenance to look, all the things trembled that were seen under him. So that's speaking about Yahweh Shai and the many angels that are gonna come and destroy this place, okay? Let me see something here. All right, one moment. All right, here we go. Uh, no. Speaking about the missiles. Nah, it's not Revelation 9. I want, let me see 11. So like it, sometimes I'll be, you know, I got to go back and refresh. So like it, uh, Bear with me. Let me see if I can uh, find it here. Cause I might just go to Daniel as well. Because I want to paint the picture of how great The host of heaven is. All right. Yeah, let me just let me just do that. Let me just go to Daniel. There is one in Revelation. Let me see if I find it in Daniel. Now, there we go. There we go. This is uh Daniel chapter seven and nine. It says, And beheld, and I beheld till the thrones were cast down, the ancient of the days did sit. So speaking about Yahweh whose garment was white as snow and the hair of his, of his head like pure wool. His throne was like uh, the fiery flame and his wheels as a burning fire. Speaking of a huge chariot. Verse 10, it says, And the fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousands, thousands ministered unto him, and 10,000 times 10,000 stood before him. Uh, the judgment was set and the books were opened. All right. I just really want to get that in Revelation because it says literally the same thing. It literally says the same thing. Matter of fact, let's do some cross-reference. 
and references it should should pop up yeah that's what there it is revelation 5 that's what i wanted revelation 5 and 11 and behold and i heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beasts and the elders and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands literally said the same thing in daniel's seventh chapter verse 10 so that's the the, the um the thousands of, of heaven is you know, when you if you want to just be you know real if you do 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands it comes up to millions and millions and millions uh, when you when you when you uh, do your uh, multiplication and adding and stuff like that that number comes up to like millions and millions and millions tens of millions all right so he's gonna come back and whack strong with the thousands of heaven all right and it says and and this all like we just broke down is gonna happen over in this area okay it's gonna happen in that area all right, and it says verse four, and whensoever the voice went out of his mouth, all they that all they burnt that heard his voice, like as the earth filleth when it uh, filleth with fire. And after uh, this, I behold, and lo, there was uh, gathered together a multitude of men out of, out of number from the four winds of the heaven, and subdued uh, to subdue the man that came out of the sea. And but I beheld, and lo, and he had uh, graved himself a great mountain and flew upon it as his chariot. But I uh, would have seen the ridge, region or place where out the hill was graven, and I could not. And after this, I beheld, and lo, all they which are gathered together to subdue him were sore afraid and yet durst fight. And lo, he saw, he saw the violence of the multitude that came. He neither lifted up his hand nor held his sword nor any instrument of war. But only I saw that he sent out of his mouth as it had been a blast of fire and as his lips a flaming uh, breath and out of his tongue, uh, he cast out sparks and tempests and they were all mixed together. The blast of fire, the flaming breath and the great tempest and fell with violence upon the multitude which was prepared to fight and burnt them up every one so that upon a sudden of an innumerable multitude, nothing was to be perceived but only dust and the smell of smoke. When I saw this, I was afraid. So this is the vision that Ezra's had. And this vision took place in this area. And we have that understanding from Genesis, the second chapter, Revelation, the 16th chapter, Joel, the third chapter of how this is going to take place and how and how the outcome is going to be according to second Ezra, the 13th chapter. So the Euphrates drying up and showing an omega sign. We opened up this lesson pretty much with that Revelation 1 and 9 or 1 and 8, where, where Yahweh said, I am the Alpha, I am the Omega, I am the beginning, the, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, saith the Lord, which is and what and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. So we're going to see this happening. And it's a beautiful thing to see this, even though this happened back in 2009, you know, but it's resurfacing. Today, it's a spirit. This is a sign, man, the omega. This means the last, the end. And it's stamped on, the, the omega sign is stamped on that land. The end is coming for this land. And it's the spirit that this happened, that, that area where this message was, was where that big old earthquake, which, you know, earthquake or no earthquake, if you, if you know what I'm saying, Whatever, it's no re uh, other no coincidence why you know thousands are dead in that area right now. So Lord willing, this is edifying. I want to give all glory, honor, and praises to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai by Shem Chakodash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who will teach well. Peace of salutation to the eleven forty four first fruit. Brother Kashkwan. Until the next time, Shalom.